The development of our game took a surprising turn. Originally, we wanted to make a deck building game about managing a tiny kingdom in a medieval setting. In this video, you'll see that we made a big mistake though, and it forced us to reconsider. While some aspects of our game will stay the same, by the end of this video, we'll not have a deck building game anymore. The idea behind our card game is that you have three heroes or advisors and you need to choose where to send them. The interesting part being that every character has their own deck, describing both what items they have as well as their personality. So the game was almost supposed to be a little story generator where cool stories can emerge from gameplay. Don't get attached to the idea though, it's gonna change a lot during this video. <laughs> And we're picking this story up right where we left off. I started setting up the code base. Meanwhile, Paul was taking the role of the art director, gathering lots of visual references. Ta-da! This is how the code architecture looks at the end of the day. I got kind of addicted to giving stuff really cool icons. So while I was having great fun setting up the code architecture, on Paul's side, things were looking a lot more grim. I did some visual development for smaller projects in the past, but um, definitely nothing on the scale of the game we're working on currently. So Paul took it slow and started out with some drafts for the general layout of things. Lunch break and I played around with the music a bit. I thought what makes something sound medieval and I still don't really know. <laughs> but this is what I came up with. Paul was on a decent trajectory for the art style, yet this was around the time where AI-generated images started becoming popular. I really wanted to know if we could potentially use that for our game, so I loaded some images into Photoshop. This is an image of a windmill generated with mid-journey, and you can see at the time it generated quite clunky results. Turned out after 12 minutes of Photoshop it kinda looked alright though. There was another problem, it was quite difficult to get a consistent art style from mid-journey. So I experimented with AI style transfer, I experimented with filters, with vectorizing the art. I got some very promising results very fast, so that was definitely encouraging. Text to image AI at the time wasn't very good at generating faces, but there were some other AI tools that were, so I went to Artbreeder and generated some faces, slapped them into Photoshop, gave them a little makeover. So step one, generate a face using AI. Step two, manually paint in some missing details. And step three, transfer the image to any style you want using AI. Here's a scuffed dragon that does not look like a dragon at all. But we know the process by now. A bit of Photoshopping later and it looked more than okay, or at least okay enough to be style transferred into something else. So now I had a great method for quickly generating art in the same style. Paul has been hard at work as well though, and he manually made his own set of cards. So here are the raw AI generated images in action, here are my favorite style transferred ones. And last but not least we got Paul's handcrafted ones, which eventually we decided to go with. Fail faster. One of the most important rules whenever you design anything. 30 days of development and what did we have to show for it? When we figured out how many cards we were gonna need, we had to simplify the art style again. Meanwhile the gameplay felt more like a math problem than an actual game. Keeping track of all of your character's decks and calculating your best move based on that was kind of exhausting. We broke the rule, we did not fail fast. We should have done more prototyping, do a quick and dirty version of the game. Instead we jumped right into the main development. But hey, all of this would have still been manageable if it hadn't been for this. Just doing one thing, doing it good, and then also communicating clearly to potential players what the one thing is they can expect from the game. I think that's refreshing for a lot of players because with many games it's not so clear actually. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the one thing people can expect from Thronefall? That's a good question. We had clearly lost track of our vision and thank god Paul was in the team because I probably would have been too stubborn to realize it. So we pulled the emergency brake but no worries, the time we spent was not for nothing. We learned a great deal from our mistakes and applied what we learned to our next attempt. Or as Jonas from the previous devlog would say, the card game is 
eliminated. But there was one thing we wanted to keep from the project and that was the fantasy. We wanted to set a clear vision for the project and stick to it right from the beginning. We wanted to make a minimalist kingdom management game and with that in mind we went back to the drawing board and that of course means prototyping. The more we tried to fix our existing card game idea, the more it started drifting and drifting into other directions. So after a few more failed card game attempts, we were finally ready to let go. Yeah, we were so a kleines tower defense game. Find ich auch nett. Ja. Das wäre auch. Naja, ich sag mal, das wäre halbwegs idiotensicher, weil das halt ein Game Loop ist, der sich schon bewährt hat. Paul with his upcoming prototypes explored more the extreme minimalism side of things, like how simple can we make this game. I meanwhile wanted to try out some economy-based game ideas. But whatever we tried this time, it was always under the same motto: making a minimalist kingdom management game. I had one idea for a minimalist game about building supply chains, and another idea about merging villages into bigger and bigger cities. I found this idea pretty promising, so I decided to make a digital prototype. You can build villages by clicking on circles and if there are two level one villages next to a circle it'll spawn a level two village. If there are two level two villages next to a field it'll spawn a level three village and so on. The better the village you build the more coins you earn and you can spend your coins to acquire new lands next to your kingdom. It was a fun puzzle game but maybe just not exactly what we were looking for. Paul improved his prototype with some additional resources. Unfortunately here too it didn't quite click yet so we ended the day a little bit frustrated. With so much time wasted and our confidence dwindling, our prototyping attempts became more and more desperate. Which in hindsight was probably a good thing because it gave us permission to try things that seemed too simple before. Paul described my new prototype as It feels like eating Nutella out of a jar. It feels great while you do it, but you kind of regret it afterwards. So I toned down the sensory overload a little bit and we could see that there was definitely something here. In case you're wondering, this was basically a tower defense game, but you played entirely with the keyboard, no mouse input required. So you couldn't choose where to build something, only what to build next. And there was something interesting about that. So inspired by my creation in a desperate late night session, Paul came up with this prototype here. You are a little king, you can collect coins and your goal is to protect the castle. Every night you're attacked by a wave of enemies and at first you have to defend that all by yourself but during the day you can spend the gold you earned on upgrading your defenses or upgrading your economy by building more fields and this vibed really really well with us it had a nice wholesomeness to it and I've always been wanting to make a tower defense game and this one you know it's approachable it's super simple it's easy to learn if this is not a minimalist kingdom manager game then I don't know what is Last time not properly validating our idea before diving into development was a big mistake, so lesson learned. This time we wanted to build a full-scale prototype of an entire level, early game, late game, everything. Sure, prototyping means it's gonna be quick and dirty, it's not gonna look great, but this time, at least in terms of gameplay, we're gonna know for sure if this works or if it does not. I soon had some units with health bars following each other around, attacking each other. We have quite the battlefield going on here already. Bam, boom, everything's fighting and exploding and shooting. The orange things here are flying units. I added some giants with lots of HP. I added some catapults. All of your units and buildings respawn for free whenever a night ends. So that's why you can see them turning gray instead of disappearing. Speaking of disappearing, there's exciting news for my last game, Will You Snail? It just got a limited physical release powered by super rare games. So if you want one, get one for your Nintendo Switch. Cause more than half has already been sold out and the opportunity is gonna disappear. <laughs> we got some collectible cards and a little booklet. Or if you're a PC player, you can still get the game on Steam. I'm really happy to see your excitement and that you're enjoying the game, so thank you very much for all of your support with that. It was time to combine what Paul made with what I made, so building system and unit system were coming together. Also we attached locks to walls, so those are basically traps you can trigger manually as the player. Day 41, after a bit more balancing and fine tuning, it was finally time to play the game. This was the all deciding moment. Would we go back to prototyping or would we make this game? Went against all of these. Now I'll take my gold from the fisher hut and from the house and reinvest it. It's so simple. During the day you build and upgrade your kingdom and at night you fight. There are predefined build slots where you can only build predefined stuff so we were actually a little scared that it might be too simple, too restrictive. But the fun we had while playing spoke a different language. We instantly became addicted and hooked on this concept. It felt like such a nice mixture between being accessible while still being strategically interesting and satisfying. Similar to what you do in an RTS game, you could try to find the perfect build order. You could try 
try to figure out with how much economic greed you could get away you with. experience this satisfying power creep of stronger and stronger waves of enemies being destroyed by your defenses. So this is it folks, we're building this thing in color and 3D. Click here to watch the next video or if that's not out yet then at the very least subscribe and play my last game Will You Snail. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you around. Bye.